سای مهاراج شلو گرو دیو کی جات نتلو بوش رو مشنو با رشت ترشت ششمر شلو باکتی بران تبامن گو سای مهاراج کی جای نتلو بوش رو مشنو با رشت ترشت ششمر شلو باکتی بران تبامن گو سای مهاراج کی جای نتلو بوش رو مشنو با رشت ترشت ششمر شلو باکتی بران تبامن گو سای مهاراج کی جای نتلو بوش رو مشنو با رشت ترشت ششمر شلو باکتی بران تسای مهاراج شلو با وبار کی جای नेतल प्रविष्ट महाबागवत श्रद्धाक्षर स्पावजी महाराज की जाए नेतल प्रविष्ट श्रद्धाच्छर रंते बाक्ति विनोद ठाकुर की जाए नेतल प्रविष्ट वैष्णव सार बाबूमा श्रद्धाजगन्नाथ स्पावजी महाराज की जाए शीरूपनु गौरीय गुरु वार्ग की जाए शीरूप सनातन भट्टरागुनाथ शीजीव गोपाल पतदाशगुनाथ � श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री आद्वैत गदाधर श्री वासरी गौर भक्त वृंद की जाए श्री क्षेत्र मंडल गौर मंडल व्रज मंडल मथुर वृंदावन धाम की जाए सर्व अभिष्ट विरत गिरिराज महाराज की जाए श्री राधा कुंड श्याम कुंड की जाए श्री मुन देवी कंग देवी की जाए श्री तुलसी महारानी वृंद देवी की जाए श्री भक्ति देवी की जाए श्री पूर्णमासी योग माया की जाए श्री गोपेश्वर महादेव की जाए श्री हरि नाम संकीर्तन की जाए अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की जाए समागत गौर भक्त वृंद की जाए शिनिताय गौर प्रेमानंदे हरि हरि बो और टुडे इस भक्ति सरंग गोसामी महाराज इस आई डोंट नो इफ इट इस अपीरेंस डे और डिस अपीरेंस डे बट एनीवेज नेतल प्रविष्टो मुश्पाद चल भक्ति सरंग गोसामी महाराज की जाए यस एंड Everything is totally okay here, but not in other parts in Bengal and some parts in Orissa. My God, it's I saw some pictures and some things. But yeah, um, it was a pretty crazy storm this morning at Mangalarti time. It was just like going, yeah, pouring like crazy. But yeah, everything's okay here. Totally okay. All right. Om Gyanat Mirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Litam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Ve Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Radhikaya Priyatmane Shri Shri Mar Bhakti Vedanta Narayaniti Namine Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shemate Bhakti Vedanta Swamini Tinamini Vancha Kalpataru Bhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhyayevacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Nama Namo Mahavadanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gauratvishe Nama Guru Ve Gaura Chantraya Radhikaya Itadalaya Krishnaya Krishna Bhaktaya Tar Bhaktaya Namo Namaha Yang Prabrajantam Anupetam Apeta Krityang Dvaipaya No Viraha Katara Ajuhava Putre Titan Mayataya Tara Gopine Dostam Sarva Bhutta Hridayam Unimana Tosmi Narayanam Namaskritya Narangchayva Narottamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jayamudirayat Shrinvatam Svakata Krishna Punya Shavana Kirtana Vridanta Stohya Badrani Vidhunoti Suritsatam Nashta Prayashvabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavatu Tama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki Tavai Vasmi Tavai Vasmi Na Jivami Kaya Vina Eti Vigyaya Radhe Tvam Naya Maam Charanantikam Tavihina Aparada Lakshay Kshiptashtakama Ditaranga Madhe Kripa Maitam Sharanam Prapanna Vrinde Namaste Charanaravinda Bhaja Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Netananda Shri Advaita Gadadar Shri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 
कृष्णा कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे ओके सो दिस इज व्हाट वी रेड यस्टरडे After describing the life and character of Maharaj Prithu, Maitreya began to speak the genealogical line of the Prithu dynasty. So, ge- genealogical line of Prithu. Vijitashva, the eldest son of Prithu, who had a reputation like his father's, became the emperor. Being affectionate to his younger brothers, he gave them different regions to rule. He gave the eastern region to Haryaksha. the southern region to Dumrakesha, the western region to Vrka, the northern region to Dravina. Formerly, Vijitashva pleased Indra and received from him the ability to disappear. Therefore, he was called Antardhan. Note, although Indra was stealing the horse from his father, liberal Vijitashva purposely excused him since he was a great demigod and servant of the lord thus indra became very pleased with him and gave him this boon vijitashva's wives and sons vijitashva married shikandi oh sorry shikandini and they gave birth to pavaka pavamana and suchi these sons were formerly fire gods they were cursed by vashishta and became sons of vijitashva but later they again attained their positions as demigods of fire and vijitashva also married nabaswati who gave birth to havirdhana considering his kingly duties like taxing punishing and finding people to be very severe and painful vijitashva gave them up on the plea of performing a long sacrifice although engaged in sacrifice He worshiped the supreme lord Paramatma in the form of Hansa avatar and attained his planet very easily. Then um Vijitashra and and uh, Nabaswati's son Havirdhana he married ha- Havirdhani. <laughs> okay? And they had six sons. Barhishat, Gara, Shukla, Krishna, Satya, and Jita Vrata. Parhishat was a prajapati, expert in karma kanda sacrifices and mystic yoga. He performed many sacrifices and scattered kusha grass all over the earth with their tips pointing east. On the order of Brahma, Parhishat, who's also who's now from now on Parhishat's going to be called Prach, uh, Prachina Barhi. So on the order of Brahma Prachina Barhi married Shatadruti the very young and beautiful daughter of the ocean Okay so Barhi Shat is Prachina Barhi Shatarup uh, Shatar Shatadruti's beauty attracted even Agni during her marriage ceremony Everyone was captivated by the tinkling of her ankle bells Prachina Barhi and Shatadruti um they gave birth or she gave birth <laughs> to the 10 prachetas who were all equal in vows and endowed with religiosity the prachetas being ordered by their father to beget children entered the ocean for 10000 years to perform austerities and worship the supreme lord now now is the beginning of the rudra git On their way, they met Lord Shiva, who was pleased with them, and gave them instructions and his prayers. With complete control, the prachetas meditated on, chanted, and worshipped these instructions. Note: the orders of the spiritual master are the sustenance of the disciple. Perfectional meditation is always meditating on the order of the spiritual master. The prachetas meet Lord Shiva. 
Vidura's question to Maitreya. So Vidura's first question was, what did Lord Shiva, being pleased, speak when the Prachetas met him? And his second question, and how do they get his rare darshan? So what did, what did Lord Shiva speak? And what, how did they get his darshan? Lord Shiva is self-satisfied, but to help people accomplish their material desires, he manifests, uh, he manifests in this material world, accompanied by his dangerous energies like Goddess Kali and Durga. Now this is Maitreya's reply to Vidura. Prachetas, accepting their father's instructions on uh, accepting their father's instructions on their heads, traveled westward to perform austerities. All right, and this is where we made it up to the description of the lake. So it's verse twenty, and I'm just curious. How much do you think? How long is this video going to be today? It's Twenty to thirty-two. Oh, great. Today's only 5,000 words. Yesterday we read 60, oh, sorry. Yesterday we read 6,000 words. So it's okay that we're a little bit late. <laughs> oh, and I didn't, um, Dandavat Pranams, Ganga Didi, Rup Manjari, Madhavi Didi, Indira Mataji, and Prajumna Prabhu, Dandavat Pranams to all of you. Haribo. Yesterday I read the Sanskrit for 20, but I realized that it was already 8 o'clock, so I didn't read the full report. But it's okay, because I made a mistake yesterday. If we read 3 yesterday, like I was thinking, we would have read like 6,500 or something. So. Okay. Sa samudram upa vistirnam apashyan samohat sara Mahanmana iva svacham prasanna shalila shayam. While traveling, the Prachetas happened to see a great reservoir of water which seemed almost as big as the ocean. The water of this lake was so calm and quiet that it seemed like the mind of a great soul, and its inhabitants, the aquatics, appeared very peaceful and unhappy to be under the protection of such a watery reservoir. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. The word Sasamudra means near the sea. The reservoirs of the water was like the reservoir of water was like a bay, for it was not very far from the sea. The word upa, meaning more or less, is used in many ways, as in the word upapati, which indicates a husband a, a husband more or less. <laughs> a husband more or less. <laughs> That is to say, a lover who is acting like a husband. Yeah, he's my husband, more or less. Upa also means greater, smaller, or nearer. Considering all these points, the reservoir of water, which was seen by the Prachetas while, while, while they were traveling, was actually a large bay or lake. One second, this thing... Sorry, my mic is there. That's better. Okay. Oh, wait, sorry. Upa also means greater, smaller, or nearer. Considering all these points, the reservoir of water, which was seen by the Prachetas while they were traveling, was actually a large bay or lake. And unlike the sea or ocean, which has turbulent waves, this reservoir was very calm and quiet. Indeed, the water was so clear that it seems like the mind of some great soul. There may be great souls, jnanis, yogis, and bhaktas, or pure devotees. Um, jnanis, yogis, and bhaktas, or pure devotees are also great souls. So there may be many great souls like them, but they are very rarely found. One can find many great souls amongst yogis and jnanis, but a truly great soul, a pure devotee of the Lord, who is fully surrendered to the Lord, is very rarely found. Samahatma Sadurlava. A devotee's mind is always calm, quiet, and desireless because he is always Anya Bilashita Shunyam. He's always free from he always uh, has no desire 
other than to serve Krishna as his personal servant, friend, father, mother, or conjugal lover. Due to his association with Krishna, a devotee is always very calm and cool. It is always, uh, sorry, it is also significant that within the red, that within that reservoir, all the aquatics were very calm and quiet. Because the disciples of a devotee have taken shelter of a great soul, they become very calm and quiet and are not agitated by the waves of, of the material world. This material world is often described as an ocean of nescience. In such an ocean, everything is agitated. The mind of a great devotee is also like an ocean or a very large lake, but there is no agitation. As stated in Bhagavad Gita, Vyavasayatmika buddhir ekehe kurunandana. Those who are fixed in the service of the Lord are not agitated by anything. It is also stated in Bhagavad Gita 6.22, Yasmin stito nadukena guru nafi vichalyate. Even if he suffers some reversals in life, a devotee is never agitated. Therefore, whoever takes shelter of a great soul or a great devotee becomes pacified. In the, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya 19, 149, it is stated, Krishna Bhakta Nishkam Ataeva Shanta. A devotee of Lord Krishna is always peaceful because he has no desire, whereas the yogis, karmis, and jnanis have so many desires to fulfill. One may argue that the devotees have desires, for, uh, for they wish to go home back to Godhead. But such a desire does not agitate the mind. Although he wishes to go back to Godhead, a devotee is satisfied in any condition of life. Consequently, the word Mahan Mana is used in this verse to indicate the reservoir of water to, uh, is used in this verse to indicate that the reservoir of water was as calm and quiet as the mind of a great devotee. What verse are we reading up to just so that I know when to stop? Whatever. I'll check here. We're reading up to verse 32. Okay. Nila rakto palambhoja kalaren devara karam angsasara sa chakra chakrava karandava nikunjitam. Sorry, nikunjitam. In that great lake, there were different types of lotus flowers. Some of them were bluish and some of them were red. Some of them grew at night and some in the day and some like the Indivada lotus flower in the evening. Combined together, the lotus flowers filled the lake so full that the lake appeared to be a great mine of such flowers. Consequently, on the shores there were swans and cranes, Chakravaka, Karandava, and many other beautiful water birds standing about. Purport. The word Akaram, mine, is significant in this verse. For the reservoir of water appeared like a mine from which different types of lotus flowers were produced. Some of the lotus flowers grew during the day, some at night, and some in the evening. And accordingly, they had different names and different colors. All these flowers were present on that lake, and because the lake was so calm and quiet and filled with lotus flowers, superior birds like swans, chakravakas, and, karandava, and karandavas stood on the shores and vibrated their different songs, making the entire scene attractive and beautiful. As there are different types of human beings, according to the association of the three qualities of material nature, there are similarly different types of birds, bees, trees, etc. Everything is divided according to the three qualities of material nature. Birds like swans and cranes, who enjoy clear waters on lotus, and lotus flowers, are different from crows who enjoy filthy places. Similarly, there are persons who are controlled by the modes of ignorance and passion, and those who are controlled by the mode of goodness. The creation is so varied that there are always varieties found in every society. Thus, on the bank of this lake, all the superior birds lived to enjoy that atmosphere created by that great reservoir filled with lotus flowers. Matta Brahmara so svarya, Rishtaroma latangripam, Parma koshara jo dikshu, Vikshipat pavanotsavam. 
There were various trees and creepers on all sides of the lake, and there were mad bumblebees humming all about them. The trees appeared to be very jolly due to the sweet humming of the bumblebees, and the saffron, which was contained in the lotus flowers, was being thrown into the air. These all created such an atmosphere that it appeared as though a festival were taking place there. <laughs> That's such a beautiful description. Purport. Trees and creepers are also different types of living entities. When bumblebees come upon the trees and creepers to collect honey, certainly such plants become very happy. On such an occasion, the wind also takes advantage of the situation by throwing pollen or saffron contained in the lotus flowers. All this combines with the sweet vibration created by the swans and the calm of the water. The Pachetas considered such a place to be like a continuous festival. From this description, it appears that the Pachetas reached Shiva Loka, which is supposed to be near, situated near the Himalaya mountains. Tatra Gandharama Karnya Devya Marga Manoharam Visis Muraja Putraste Mridanga Panavadyanu the, the sons of the king became very much amazed when they heard vibrations from various drums and kettle drums along with other orderly musical sounds pleasing to the ear. Purport. In addition to the various flowers and living entities about the lake, there were also many musical vibrations. The void of impersonalists, which has no variegatedness, is not at all pleasing compared with such a scene. <laughs> Actually, one has to attain the perfection of Satchitananda, eternity, bliss, and knowledge. Because the impersonalists deny these varieties of creation, they cannot actually enjoy transcendental bliss. The place where the Prachetas arrived was the abode of Lord Shiva. Impersonalists are generally worshippers of Lord Shiva, but Lord Shiva is never without variety in his abode. <clears throat> Thus, wherever one goes, whether to the planet of Lord Shiva, Lord Vishnu, or Lord Brahma, there is variety to be enjoyed by persons full in knowledge and bliss. <clears throat> There's a line missing, so let me go to database.io. Srimad Bhagavatam. Come on, Internet. Canto 4. And Chapter 24, right? Yeah. What the heck? Do you hear that honking in the background? Where are we? What is going on? Somebody just has their hand stuck on the horn. Taryeva sarasasthasma nishkramantam sahanugam upagiya manam amara pravaram vibudanugai taptahema nikaya bham shitti kantam trilochanam prasada samukam viksha Prana, prane mor jatakotuka. Someone's horn got stuck or something. Okay. Ah, it's over. Okay. The Prachetas were fortunate to see Lord Shiva, the chief of the demigods, emerging from the water with his associates. His bodily luster was like molten gold. Molten gold? Interesting. His throat was bluish, and he had three eyes, which looked very merciful upon his devotees. He was accompanied by many musicians who were glorifying him. As soon as the Prachetas saw Lord Shiva, they immediately offered their obeisances in great amazement, and fell down at the lotus feet of the Lord. <laughs> Purport. The word Vibuddha Nugai indicates that Lord Shiva is always accompanied by the denizens of the higher planets known as Gandharvas and Kinaras. They are very expert in musical science, and Lord Shiva is worshipped by them constantly. 
and but she was also with all the different ghosts and goblins and all those people, right? So, or is this a different form? Is this, oh God, I have questions. Anyhow, I should know this because we did a whole thing on Shiva Tattva, but because there's Shambhu, is it Rudra who's, is Shambhu, uh, does he have all these ghosts and goblins all around him? And he must. Yeah, I think it's only... I don't know. I'm going to be speculating here. Okay. Lord Shiva is generally... Uh, in pictures, Lord Shiva is generally painted white. But here we find that the color of his skin is not exactly white, but like molten gold, or a glowing yellowish color. Because Lord Shiva is always very, very merciful, his name is Ashutosh. Amongst all the demigods, Lord Shiva can be pacified even by the lowest class of men, who need only offer him obeisances and leaves of bale tree, of a bale tree. Thus his name is Ashutosh, which means that he is pleased very quickly. Generally, those who are very fond of material prosperity approach Lord Shiva for such benediction. The Lord, being very merciful, quickly awards all the blessings the devotee asks of him. The demons take advantage of this, uh, of this leniency, leniency, and sometimes take benedictions from Lord Shiva, which can be very dangerous to others. For instance, Vrikasura took a benediction from Lord Shiva, by which he could kill everyone he touched on the head. Although Lord Shiva sometimes very liberally gives such benedictions to his devotees, the difficulty is that the demons, being very cunning, sometimes wants to experiment improperly with such benedictions. For instance, after receiving his benediction, Vrikasura tried to touch the head of Lord Shiva. Devotees of Lord Shiva, uh, sorry, devotees of Lord Vishnu, however, have no desire for such benedictions. And Lord Vishnu does not give his devotees benedictions, which would cause disturbance to the whole world. Oh my god, that honking is driving me nuts. Sorry. And Lord Vishnu does not give his devotees benedictions, which would cause disturbance to the whole world. Satan prapanarti haro Bhagavan dharma vatsala Dharma gyan shila sampanan Prita pritan uvachaha Okay, that guy's honking was not, his, hon his horn was not stuck. He was just being super obnoxious. My God. Lord Shiva became very pleased with the Prachetas because generally Lord Shiva is the protector of pious persons and persons of gentle behavior. Being very much pleased with the, prince with the princes, he began to speak as follows. Purport. The Supreme Personality of Godhead Vishnu or Krishna is known as Bhakta Vatsal. And herein we find Lord Shiva described as Dharma Vatsal. Of course, the word Dharma Vatsal refers to a person who lives according to religious principles. That is understood. Nonetheless, these two words have additional significance. Sometimes Lord Shiva has to deal with persons who are in the modes of passion and ignorance. Such persons are not always very much religious and pious in their activities. But since they worship Lord Shiva for some material profit, they sometimes obey the religious principles. As soon as Lord Shiva sees that his devotees are following religious principles, he blesses them. The Prachetas, sons, sons of Prachina Bharhi, were naturally very pious and gentle, and consequently, Lord Shiva was immediately pleased with them. Lord Shiva could understand that the princes were sons of Vaishnavas, and as such, Lord Shiva offered prayers to the Supreme Personality of Godhead as follows. Shri Rudra Uvacha Yuyang Vidishada Putra Viditam Vashtrikirshitam Anugrahaya Bhadrangva Evang me darshanam kritam. Lord Shiva said, You are all the sons of King Prachina Bharhi, and I wish all good fortune to you. I also know what you are going to do, and therefore I am visible to you just to show you uh, just to show my mercy upon you. Purport By these words Lord Shiva indicates that what the princes were going to do was known to him. 
It is a fact that they were going to worship Lord Vishnu by severe austerities and penances. Knowing this fact, Lord Shiva immediately became very pleased as apparent by the next verse. This indicates that a person who is not yet a devotee of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but who desires to serve the Supreme Lord, receives the benedictions of the demigods, headed by the chief demigod, Lord Shiva. Thus a devotee of the Lord uh, does thus a devotee of the Lord does not need to try to please the demigods separately. Simply by worshipping the Supreme Lord, a devotee can please all of them. Nor does he have to ask the demigods for material benedictions, for the demigods, being pleased with a devotee, automatically offer him everything that he needs. The demigods are servants of the Lord, and they are always prepared to help the devotee in all circumstances. Therefore, Srila Bilba Mangal Thakur said, that if one has unalloyed devotion for the Supreme Lord, the Goddess of Liberation is ready to serve him, to say nothing of the gods of material opulences. Indeed, all the demigods are simply waiting for an opportunity to serve the devotee. Thus, there is no need for a devotee of Krishna to endeavor for material opulence or liberation. By being situated in the transcendental position of devotional service, he receives all the benefits of Dharma, Artha, Kama, and Moksha. Ya param ramas ramhasa shakshat triguna jiva sangitat bhagavantam vasudevam prapanna sapriyo hime. Lord Shiva continued Any person who is surrendered to the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna, the controller of everything, material as well as the living entity, is actually very dear to me. Purport. Purport. Now Lord Shiva explains the reason that he personally came before the princes. It is because all the princes are devotees of Lord Krishna, as stated in Bhagavad Gita 7.19. Bahunam janmanam mante yanavan mam prapadyate vasudeva sarvam iti sa mahatma sadurlava. After many births and deaths, he who is actually in knowledge surrenders unto me, knowing me to be the cause of all causes and all that is. Such a great soul is very rare. Lord Shiva, is rarely, Lord Shiva is rarely seen by common men. And similarly, a person who is fully surrendered unto Vasudeva Krishna is also very rarely seen, because a person who is fully surrendered unto the Supreme Lord is very rare. Sa Mahatma Sadurlava. Consequently, Lord Shiva came especially to see the Prachetas because they were fully surrendered unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead Vasudev. Vasudev is also mentioned in the beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam in the mantra Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Since Vasudev is the ultimate truth, Lord Shiva openly proclaims that one who is a devotee of Lord Vasudev, who is surrendered to Lord Krishna, is actually very dear to him. Lord Vasudev, Krishna, is worshipable not only by ordinary living entities, but by demigods like Lord Shiva, Lord Brahma, and others. The guy is still not stopping honking. What is going on out there? Must be a crazy jam or something. Lord Vasudev Krishna is worshipable. No, no, no. Um, Yam Brahma Varunendra Rudra Maruta Stuvanti Divyai Stavai. Srimad Bhagavatam 12.13.1 Krishna is worshipped by Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, Varuna, Indra, Chandra, and all other demigods. That is also the situation with a devotee. Indeed, one who takes to Krishna consciousness immediately becomes very dear to anyone who is simply finding out and beginning to understand what Krishna consciousness actually is. Similarly, all the demigods are also trying to find out who is actually surrendered to Lord Vasudeva. Because the, Pacheta, sorry, because the Pacheta princes were surrendered to Vasudev, Lord Shiva willingly came forth to see them. Lord Vasudev, or Krishna, is described in Bhagavad Gita as Purushottam. Actually, he is the enjoyer, the Purusha, and the supreme, Uttama, as well. He is the enjoyer of everything, the Prakriti and the Purusha. Being influenced by the three modes of material nature, the living entity tries to dominate material nature, but actually, he is not the Purusha, the enjoyer, but Prakriti, as described in Bhagavad Gita 
apareyam itastvanyam prakritim vidime param. Thus the jiva or living entity is actually prakriti, or the marginal energy of the Supreme Lord. Being associated with material energy, he tries to lord it over the material nature. This is also confirmed in Bhagavad Gita 15.7. The living entities in this conditioned world are my eternal fragmental parts. Sorry. Due to conditioned life, they are struggling very hard with the six senses, which include the mind. By endeavoring to dominate material nature, the living entity simply struggles hard for existence. Indeed, he struggles so hard to enjoy himself that he cannot even enjoy the material resources. Thus, he is sometimes called Prakriti, or Jiva, for he is situated in the marginal potency. When the living entity is covered with the three modes of material nature, he is called Jiva Samgita. There are two kinds of living entities. One is called Kshara, and the other is called Akshar. Kshara refers to those who have fallen down and become conditioned, and Akshar refers to those who are not conditioned. That must mean that they must have fallen down from Vaikuntha, right? If they fell, da if they fell down. Nope, they fell down from the Tatashta Shakti. I mean, the Tatashta region, as it might say. The vast majority of living entities in the spiritual world are Kshara. Okay, yeah, the vast majority of the living entities live in, um, live in the spiritual world, and those living entities are called Akshar. They are in the position of Brahman, pure spiritual existence. They are different from those who have been conditioned by the three modes of material nature. Being above both the Kshara and Akshar, Lord Krishna Vasudev is described in Bhagavad Gita 1518 as Purushottam. The impersonalist may say that Vasudev is the impersonal Brahman, but actually the impersonal Brahman is subordinate to Krishna, as also confirmed in Bhagavad Gita 1427. Brahmano hi pratishtaham. That Krishna is the source of the impersonal Brahman. Oh, sorry, that Krishna is the source of the impersonal Brahman is also confirmed in Brahma Samhita 540. Yasya Prabha Prabhavato Jagaranda Koti. The impersonal Brahman is nothing but the effulgence or bodily rays of Krishna. And in those bodily rays, there are innumerable universes floating. Thus, in all respects, Vasudev Krishna is the Supreme Lord, and Lord Shiva is very satisfied with those who are completely surrendered to him. Complete surrender is desired by Krishna, as he, indi as he indicates in the last chapter of Bhagavad Gita, 1866. Sarva dharma praja. The word shakshat, meaning directly, is very significant. There are many so-called devotees, but actually they are only karmis and jnanis, for they are not directly devotees of Lord Krishna. The karmis sometimes offer the results of their activities to Lord Vasudev, and this offering is called karmarpanam. These are considered to be fruit of activities, for the karmis consider Lord Vishnu to be one of the demigods like Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma. Because they consider Lord Vishnu to be on the same level with the demigods, they contend that surrendering to the demigods is as good as surrendering unto Vasudev. This contention is denied herein, because if it were true, Lord Shiva would have said that, surren uh, Lord Shiva would have said that surrender unto him Lord Vasudev, Vishnu, or Brahma is the same. However, Lord Shiva does not say this because he himself surrenders unto Vasudev, and whoever else surrenders unto Vasudev is very, very dear to him. This is expressed herein openly. The conclusion is that a devotee of Lord Shiva is not dear to Lord Shiva, but a devotee of Lord Krishna is very dear to Lord Shiva. <laughs> so Dharma Nishtash... Uh, so dharma nishta shata janma bipuman virinchatam eti tata param himam avyakritam bhagavato vaishnavam avyakritam bhagavato tavaishnavam 
Padamyataham Vibuddha Kalatyaye. A person who executes his occupational duty properly for 100 births becomes qualified to occupy the posts of Brahma, and if he becomes more qualified, he can approach Lord Shiva. A person who is directly surrendered to Lord Krishna or Vishnu is unalloyed, sorry, is in unalloyed devotional service. Sorry, a person who is directly surrendered to Lord Krishna or Vishnu in unalloyed devotional service is immediately promoted to the spiritual planets. Lord Shiva and other demigods attain these planets after the destruction of this material world. Purport. This verse gives an idea of the highest perfection of the evolutionary process. As described by the Vaishnava poet Jayadev Goswami, Pralaya payo di jale dritavan asivedam. Oh, what? This is in a complete sentence. Oh God, let me check. Um, this is 29. All right. Next. Actually, I can just type in 29 here. 29. Okay, I guess it is a, I guess it is a complete sentence. Has <laughs> described. Okay, whatever. I get it. As described by the Vaishnav po po uh, poet Jayadeva Goswami, Pralaya Pralaya Dutavam Asivedam. Let us begin tracing the evolutionary process from the point of devastation, Pralaya, when the whole universe is filled with water. At that time, there are many fishes and other aquatics, and from these aquatics evolve creepers, trees, etc. From these, insects and reptiles evolve, and from them, Birds, beasts, and then human beings are finally civilized. Uh, and okay, then human beings and finally civilized human beings. See, there's they're different species. <laughs> yeah. Now the civilized human being is at a junction where he can make further evolutionary progress in spiritual life. I guess not a different species, but yeah, according to consciousness. Here it is stated, Swadharma Nishta. That when a living entity comes into a civilized form of life, there must be swadharma, social divisions according to one's work and qualifications. This is indicated in Bhagavad Gita 4.13. Chaturvanya maya shishtam guna karma vipagasha. According to the three modes of material nature and the work ascribed to them, the four divisions of human society were created by me. In civilized human society, there must be the divisions of Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, and Shudra, and everyone must properly execute his occupational duty in accordance with his division. Here it is described, Swadharma Nishta, that it does not matter whether one is a Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, or Shudra. If one sticks to his position and properly executes his particular duty, he is considered a civilized human being. Otherwise, he is no better than an animal. It is also mentioned herein that whoever executes his occupational duty, his Swadharma, from 100 births, for instance, if a Brahman continues to act as a Brahman, that person becomes eligible for promotion to Brahmaloka, the planet where Lord Brahma lives. There is also a planet called Shivaloka or Sada Shivaloka, which is situated in a marginal position between the spiritual and material worlds. If, after being situated in Brahmaloka, one becomes more qualified, he is promoted to Sada Shivaloka. Similarly, when one becomes even more qualified, he can attain the Vaikuntha Lokas. The Vaikuntha Lokas are targets for everyone, even the demigods, and they can be attained by a devotee who has no desire for material benefit. As indicated in Bhagavad Gita 8.16, one does not need to escape material miseries even if he is elevated to Brahma Loka. A Brahma Bhubana Loka Punar Avatirno Juna. Similarly, one is not very safe even if he is promoted to Shiva Loka because the planet of Shiva Loka is marginal. However, if one attains Vaikuntha uh, Loka, he attains the highest perfection of life and the end of the evolutionary process. In other words, it is confirmed herein that a person in human society who has developed consciousness 
must take to Krishna consciousness in order to be promoted to Vaikuntha Loka or Krishna Loka immediately after leaving the body. Takta deham punar janma naiti mam eti sorutuna. Bhagavad Gita 4.9 A devotee who is fully in Krishna consciousness, who is not attracted by any other loka or planet, including Brahma Loka and Shiva Loka, is immediately transferred to Krishna Loka, mam eti. That is the highest perfection of life and the perfection of the evolutionary process. Ata Bhagavata Yuyam Priyasta Bhagavan Yata Namar Bhagavata Namcha Preyan Anyo Stikarhichit You are all devotees of the Lord, and as such, I appreciate that you are as respectable as the Supreme Personality of Godhead Himself. I know in this way that the devotees also respect me, and that I am dear to them. Thus, no one can be as dear to the devotees as I am. Purport. It is said, Vaishnavanam Yatashambhu, Lord Shiva is the best of all devotees. Therefore, all devotees of Lord Krishna are also devotees of Lord Shiva. In Vrindavan, there is Lord Shiva's temple called Gopishwar. The gopis used to worship not only Lord Shiva, but Katyayani, or Durga, as well. But their aim was to attain the favor of Lord Krishna. A devotee of Lord Krishna does not disrespect Lord Shiva, but worships Lord Shiva as the most exalted devotee of Lord Krishna. Consequently, whenever a devotee worships Lord Shiva, he prays to Lord Shiva to achieve the favor of Krishna, and he does not request material profit. In Bhagavad Gita 720, it is said that generally people worship demigods for some material profit. Ka mais tais tair krita jnana. Driven by material lust, they worship demigods, they worship demigods. But a devotee never does so, for he is never driven by material lust. That is the difference between a devotee's respect for Lord Shiva and an asura's respect for him. The asura worships Lord Shiva, takes some benediction from him, misuses the benediction, and ultimately is killed by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who awards him liberation. <gasps> Whoa! Oh wait, never mind. I was thinking, killed by liberation. <laughs> by impersonal liberation, but no, no. He's killed. Yeah. Never mind. Because Lord Shiva is a great devotee of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he loves all the devotees of the Supreme Lord. Lord Shiva told the Prachetas that because they were devotees of the Lord, he loved them very much. Lord Shiva was not kind and merciful only to the Prachetas. Lord Kish uh, anyone who is a devotee of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is very dear to Lord Shiva. Not only are the devotees Lord dear to Lord Shiva, but he respects them as much as he respects the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Oh, not only are they dear to him, but he respects them as much as he respects the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Similarly, Devotees of the Supreme Lord also worship Lord Shiva as the most dear associate of Lord Krishna. They do not worship him as a separate personality of Godhead. It is stated in the list of Nam Aparads that it is an offense to think that the chanting of the name of Hari and the chant chanting of, of Hara, or Lord Shiva, are the same. The devotees must always know that v Lord Vishnu is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and that Lord Shiva is his devotee. A devotee, should, uh, a, do, a devotee should be offered respect on the level of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and sometimes even more respect. Indeed, Lord Ram, the Personality of Godhead himself, sometimes worshipped Lord Shiva. If a devotee is worshipped by the Lord, why should a devotee not be worshipped by other devotees on the same level with the Lord? This is the conclusion. From this verse, it appears that Lord Shiva blesses the Asuras simply for the sake of formality. Actually, he loves one who is he loves one who is devoted to the supreme personality of Godhead. Okay, we're doing the last two verses now. Idam viviktam japta vyam pavitra mangalam param nishaya sakarang chapi shuyatam tarvadamiva. Now I shall chant one mantra, which is not only transcendental, pure, and auspicious but is the best prayer for anyone who is aspiring to attain the ultimate goal of life. When I chant this mantra, please hear it carefully and attentively. Purport. 
The word vivictum is very significant. No one should think no one should think of the prayer recited by Lord Shiva as being sectarian. Rather, they are very confidential. So much so that anyone desiring the ultimate prosperity or auspicious goal of life must take the instructions of Lord Shiva and pray to and glorify the Supreme Personality of Godhead as Lord Shiva himself did. Maitreya Uvacha Ittana Krusha Hridaya Bhagavan Ahatan Shiva Padanjalin Rajaputran Narayana Parovacha. This is the last verse. The great sage Maitreya continued, Out of his causeless mercy, the exalted personality Lord Shiva, a great devotee of Lord Narayan, continued to speak to the king's sons, who were standing with folded hands. Purport. Lord Shiva voluntarily came to bless the sons of the king as well as do something beneficial for them. He personally chanted the mantra so that the mantra would be more powerful and he advised that the mantra be chanted by the king's sons, the Rajaputras. When a mantra is chanted by a great devotee, the mantra becomes more powerful. Although the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is powerful in itself, a disciple upon initiation receives the mantra from his spiritual master, for when the mantra is chanted by the spiritual master, it becomes more powerful. Lord Shiva advised the sons of the king to hear him. I'm sorry, Lord Shiva advised the sons of the king to hear him attentively, for inattentive hearing is offensive. Yikes! <laughs> inattentive hearing is offensive. Oh my god, I must have made so many offenses to my Buddha. Alright, so now tomorrow we will begin the Rudra Geet. And the Rudra Geet, I did this yesterday. Where is file? Shimad Bhagavatam word count. Okay. So I prepared this yesterday so that I won't be extra late. <laughs> um, we'll read part one, part two, part three, and part four of Rudra Geet. So this is going to take us four days to get through this Rudra Geet. We'll also finish the chapter in four days, though. All right. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna, oh, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, oh, Hare Rama, oh, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, oh, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Bol, Hare Bol, Hare Bol, Nitai Gor, Hare Bol, Nitai Gor, Hare Bol, Hare Bol, Hare Bol, Nitai Gor, Hare Bol. Jai Shishi Guru Guranga Gandharvika Giritari Shishi Radha Vinod Vihari Juki Jai Shi Govinda Gopinath Maran Mohan Juki Jai Nitil Pravishtam Vishnupar Ashatar Shatashmar Chilabakti Vedanta Narayan Vasai Maharaj Shri Guru Deviki Jai Nitil Pravishtam Vishnupar Ashatar Shatashmar Chilabakti Vedanta Narayan Vasai Maharaj Ki Jai Nitil Pravishtam Vishnupar Ashatar Shatashmar Chilabakti Vedanta Vaman Vasai Maharaj Ki Jai Nitil Pravishtam Vishnupar Ashtara Shatashmar Shila Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai Nitil Pravishtam Vishnupar Ashtara Shatashmar Shila Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Nitil Pravishtam Vishnupar Ashtara Shatashmar Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Goswami Prabhupada Ki Jai Nitil Pravishtam Maha Bhagavat Shila Bhakshara Spavaji Maharaj Ki Jai Nitil Pravishtam Shila Satcharanda Bhakti Vinod Thakur Ki Jai 
Into the Pravishta Vaishnav Sava Gomash, the Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj Kijai, Shri Rupunu Gorya Guru Varga Kijai, Shri Rup Sanatan Pataragunath, Shri Jeeva Gopal Patadashagunath Sharga Sai Prabhu Kijai, Shri Sarup Damadar Rai Ramanandari Shivor Parshad the Brinda Kijai, Namachai Shlahaira Stakur Kijai, Prem Sekoho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunitananda, Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shivasari Gora Bhakta Brinda Kijai, Shri Kshetra Mandala Gora Mandala Braja Mandala Mathura Vindavan Tam Kijai, Sarva Abhishta Bharatik. Pradhata Giri Raj Maharaj Kijai, Shri Radha Kunda Shama Kun Kijai, Shri Muna Devi Ganga Devi Kijai, Shri Tulsi Maharani Brinda Devi Kijai, Shri Bhakti Devi Kijai, Shri Gopeshwar Mahadev Kijai, Shri Shiva, Lord Shiva Kijai, Pachetas Kijai, Shri Grantaraj Shimad Bhagavatam Kijai, Anantakoti Rudra Git Kijai, Ananta Koti Vaishnava, Vrinda Ki Jai, Samagata Gaur Bhakti, Vrinda Ki Jai, and also today's Nethila Pravishta Mishapad Shila Bhakti Saranga Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai. Don't know if it's his appearance day or disappearance day. Anyhow, we'll find out tonight. Shri Harinam Sankirtan Ki Jai, Ananta Koti Vaishnava, Vrinda Ki Jai, Samagata Gaur Bhakti, Vrinda Ki Jai, Shinitai Gaur, Primanande, Hari Hari Go. Vrinda Itulsi Devai, Priyai Keshavashaja. Krishna Bhakti Pradadevi Satyavatai Namo Namaha Vancha Kalpataru Bhyashta Kripa Sindhu Bhyai Vacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namaha Dandavat Pranams And Prajumna Prabhu is asking How can we worship Lord Shiva? Well, we definitely make a point to worship, when we do worship him that we're worshiping him as the best of devotees, Vaishnavanam Yata Shambhu. That's why on Purukama, whenever we go to the different Mahadevs, we always sing Ohe Vaishnav Thakur. And, um, oh, and I like Rupmanjari's answer, much, much more specific and a nice answer. <laughs> we can worship him for permission to enter the Dham. Yes, because... Lord Shiva is Kshetrapal. He is the protector of the Dham. We can't enter the Dham without his mercy. So that we definitely always approach Lord Shiva whenever before entering in the Dham to get his permission. Dandava right. Pranams, everybody. Dandava Pranams, Urukmini, Rupmanjari, Indira Mataji, Prajumna Prabhu. Okay, and it is Srila Bhakti Saranga Goswami Maharaj's disappearance day. Thanks, Rukmini. Oh, and, and Rukmini gave a link there. If anybody wants to uh, s s see his photo and read something about him. All right. Jai Shri Radhe Haribo. Dandavat pronounce everybody. And Ganga, Ganga Didi. I can't remember who else is there. I'm not sure if Prasay Shri Mataji is there. Anyways, Haribo.